Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to the course on matrix computation and its application. So, in the previous lecture, we have just discussed about the complex vector space. So, today we are going to use the inner product that how we can define the inner product for the uh, defined the inner product on the uh, complex vector space. So, let us do that one. So, in the previous lecture, we have discussed that suppose we have a vector space. that is V. So, we are talking about the nth dimensional vector space that we are defining on the complex number. So, it is a complex vector space of n dimension. Now, we want to define the inner product over this vector space. So, how we can define is that, so let us complex inner product. Now, let I take two vectors u and v belongs to C n. So, it is a C n means I am just taking the field as a complex number. So, we can remove this one. So, we are talking about the field that is a complex number. So, u and v belongs to C n then and if k be any scalar. So, k be any scalar means k I am taking belongs to the complex number C then, then the complex Euclidean inner product. So, the complex Euclidean inner product is defined as. Now, so we define the inner product as u v by this sign. Now, this is the inner product if it is satisfied so, we define the inner product as this one. So, you can see from here that maybe I can write like this. So, I will define this inner product. So, that is from C n cross C n to real number or maybe I can say complex number, set of complex number. Now, how we are uh, going to define because in the real vector space whatever we are defining was the real numbers. Now, we are talking about the complex number. So, it defined like this one and so this is the uh, complex Euclidean inner product satisfying the following conditions, condition or axioms. So, the first one is that the inner product I am defining. So, u dot v because I am talking about the C n. So, I am just defining u dot v. So, you can write this one as same as I am defining the inner product. So, this is is equal to v dot u if I define the inner product the conjugate. So, we know that the if suppose I have a a plus i b then conjugate of this is a minus i b. So, we are taking the conjugate here and this property is called anti symmetric. in the real vector space it was symmetric, but here we are defining the anti symmetric. Second one is that we take a scalar k a, k u and v 
then this is equal to k in a product v and this is we know that additive or distributive third one is if I take u and k v then this is equal to the conjugate of k u v. So, this is or maybe I can write this one as homogeneity and this is anti homogeneity. The fourth one is u plus v and suppose I have a w then this should be equal to u w plus v w. So, this is called basically distributive. And the last one is that if you take u with u itself then this is always greater than equal to 0 and if this is 0 which implies u is 0. So, this is called the positivity. So, the condition here is changing only with respect to the conjugate because we are dealing with the complex numbers. So, here I can write that w belongs to C n and this is true for all u v. Now, so let us define the inner product. So, suppose I take a vector. So, let us take, so let us choose a vector u belongs to C n then definitely u is equal to u 1, u 2, u 3, u n where each u i is a complex number. Then I take v as v 1, v 2, v 3, v n. So, each v i also complex number then we define u dot product v. So, in the u dot product v what we are going to do is that I will apply u 1 similar v 1 plus u 2 v 2 u 3 v 3 u n v n. So, let us uh, uh, apply the same way we are applying for the real uh, vector spaces. Now, the problem in this case is that, that suppose I take u dot u, then this will be u 1 square u 2 square and u n square. So, for example, so let us take example, let us I take u from maybe I take it uh, I just take it 1 plus i and then i. Suppose I take this one and I you take v as minus i and 2 minus i. Now, if I take the dot product of this one that the way we are defining. Now, Now, if I take u dot product u and if I write like this one, then it is giving us that I should have a u 1 square plus u 2 square this way. Now, from here if you see it will be 1 plus i whole square plus i square and this is giving me 1 plus i square plus 2 i and plus i square and i square we know it is minus 1. So, from here we will get, so this will become minus 1 plus 2 i. It means 
this is if you represent this is giving you the length and that length is coming a complex number which is not possible because the complex uh, the length should be a real number. So, it is I can write that not possible. So, the for this one what we need to do is that we need to redefine the dot product dot or inner product. So, what I do I will define u dot v or maybe u v here I am defining because we, we are dealing with c n. So, now we will define like this one u 1 v 1 conjugate u 2 v 2 conjugate and u n v n conjugate or I can define as u 1 conjugate v 1 u 2 conjugate v 2 u n conjugate v n because we have to take the conjugate of the other one to satisfy this condition. So, generally we can choose any one, but generally we choose this definition. So, this definition we are going to deal with, but both are same. Now, this can be verified from here. Now, if I use this one, then so this is wrong way. Now, I define u dot u by this way. So, what I am going to do is that I am going to take u 1 into u 1 bar u 2 into u 2 bar, bar means conjugate. So, this will be I know that this will equal to u 1 square plus modulus of u 2 square and from here you know that this is equal to so, real number plus real number. So, this is always greater than equal to 0 and then we can find out its value. So, if I take the here value of u, so u dot u is basically I am taking the modulus value of u 1. So, modulus value I am just defining here. So, suppose I know the value a plus i b is my complex number. So, this is my suppose a and b. So, this is let my complex number a plus i b. So, this value then I know that this is a b. So, it is a square plus b square under the root and I know that the modulus value of a plus i b is this one under the root. So, and also I can define uh, verify this uh, as here also that a plus i b multiplied by a minus i b. So, this one I can write as a square plus minus i b square and this will be a square minus i square b square and that will be a square b square. So, from here and I am taking the this value as a square here. So, so now this can be written as, so this can be written as suppose this is my uh, complex number z and this is z bar. So, I can write from here that this is z bar square because z bar is a square root of this one. So, now we can use this one. So, it is 1 plus i so, I can write from here 1 is i a is 1 and i is also the coefficient of i is 1. So, it will be 2 now 1 plus 1 2 and plus so u 2 is i. So, it is 1 so it will be So, my u and u dot u is 3 and this one I can write like this also. 
सो यू वन डॉट यू वन बार यू टू डॉट यू टू बार सो दिस विल बी इक्वल टू वन प्लस आई इंटू वन माइनस आई प्लस आई इंटू माइनस आई सो दिस वन यू नो दैट इवन आई कैन जस्ट मल्टीप्लाई हेयर टेकिंग दिस वन सो इट इज वन माइनस आई प्लस आई माइनस आई स्क्वेयर माइनस आई स्क्वेयर एंड दैट यू कैन टेक इट एज वन प्लस वन प्लस वन एंड दैट इज थ्री सो इट इज बेसिकली टू एंड देन इट इज वन सो टू प्लस वन थ्री सो नाउ फ्रॉम हेयर यू कैन फाइंड आउट दिस डॉट प्रोडक्ट इन दिस वे एंड दैट वर्क फाइन so this is the change we have done in the inner product so it means that for u dot v i can define as so now if i want to define in the matrix form so i can define as u transpose v bar or maybe i can also define u bar transpose v and this is also sometime can be written as u star v because star u star i know that this is equal to conjugate transpose or transpose conjugate they are same so i can define any of this one all will be giving the same values because you can define the same way here and you getting the same value so this one is our inner product in this case and i have my u and v so u if i take uh, 1 plus i and i and v is minus i 2 minus i <coughs> now i define u dot v so this is i am just defining as transpose or maybe i just take it u dot v as so this is my u1 u1 v1 bar u2 v2 bar so this is u1 is 1 plus i taking the dot product with the v1 bar so this is my v1 see this is u1 this is u2 the component v1 and v2 so from here i take 1 plus i and then it become i i and then u2 plus i and from here you can take this so it will be i i square is minus 1 plus 2i and i square is minus 1 so from here it is 3i so i can write minus 2 plus 3i this one uh, is the dot product of u v so and this one i can write as u transpose v bar so we have taken this value or maybe i can define this as u dot v i can write as u1 bar v1 plus u2 bar v2 so from here if you see it will be 1 minus i into minus i plus minus i and 2 minus i so it is minus one, minus i and plus i square minus 2i and this will be plus i square now from here it is i square and i square so minus 1 and minus 1 minus 2 minus 3i so if you see from here i have taken in this form now it is coming like this one but using anti symmetry property that shows that u v if you take 
the dot product that is equal to v u this one. So, u dot v I have taken with the definition and we have taken this is the definition. So, that is our definition. So, it is minus 2 plus 3 i. I just cha change this one. So, it becomes u v dot product conjugate. So, if you take this one it is a minus 3 i. Okay, so, one definition we have to take and that definition is this one. The same way I can uh, define here maybe we can check with the so, I can define from here. So, it becomes basically this can be written as u conjugate transpose v this one. So, using the anti symmetric this will be same. So, this way we can define the inner product in the set of complex in the uh, in the complex vector space. Now, so after uh, doing this one now, we want to check whether it is satisfying all these properties or not. So, all the other properties are okay. anti symmetric we have just seen this is we have already seen in the case of uh, real number also. The only thing we have changed is this one. So, it is anti homogeneity. So, this property we can check in this case also. Now, we have defined that u and k v. So, if I take this one for any u and v belongs to C n and k belongs to the complex number. So, then I can write this as my u i k v i conjugate i from 1 to n. And now, I can take my k conjugate out of this sum. So, this will be u i v i this one and that can be written as u v. So, that is why this conjugate of the uh, scalar will come out in this one. So, that is the only property we need to satisfy it for the in the case of complex vector spaces and the anti symmetric we have already done. All other properties are same and we can verify ourselves. So, after doing this one, so I will uh, define the inner product. So, let us take the help of inner product to check whether two matrices are orthogonal to each other or not. Now, before that one I will define the inner product. So, let us define the inner product. In the vector space V that is set of comp continuous function from A to B. So, here we are taking real valued function. So, we are dealing with only real numbers. <coughs> now, we have already defined the inner product in the case of uh, uh, polynomials. Yeah, so, here we have uh, defined the inner product in the case of complex uh, in the case of continuous function and then we have defined this one. So, we have already defined then what I are going to do is that I will use this uh, to find out that how we can say that two continuous functions are orthogonal to each other or not. So, let us do this one. So, this is the inner product and we have already defined. Now, suppose we have a set of set of functions I just take the standard uh, basis. So, let us take 1 x x square. 
So, these are the bases I have taken three uh, functions belongs to this one. So, they belongs to the vector space V. So, which is C and let us define from A to B. So, let us take this one as in this case. So, we have to define the interval. So, I just define this as from minus 1 to 1 or we can define anything, but let us take it from minus 1 to 1. Now, these are set of vectors. So, we know that, so I can take this as a f 1. So, this one I can write as a f 1 x, this is my f 2 x and this is f 3 x. Now, we know that f 1, f 2 and f 3 are linearly independent. So, they are linearly independent because if I already seen that we compare the coefficients of the same power of x and then we can define that this is a linearly independent. Then, so and also this function, this uh, vector space is a infinitely dimensional space. So, it is not the basis, it is just I am taking the, the set of uh, functions. So, it is C A B is infinitely dimensional, infinite dimensional space and this is a set of vectors. It is not the basic, it is set of vectors and they are linearly independent. So, that we have already seen. Now, using Gram Smith process, we want to make them orthogonal. So, this one we want to make it orthogonal. So, this is a Gram Smith process. So, let us see how we can find out. So, we are making them orthogonal not the orthonormal. So, let us do that one. So, the step one. Now, first before that one we need to define the inner product. So, the inner product we are taking for any function f and g is from minus 1 to 1 f x g x d x. So, this is the inner product we are defining and that we already know that this is a inner product in the defined on the set of all the continuous function from A to B. So, let us uh, take step 1. First I take f 1. So, this is I am just taking u 1 is equal to f 1. So, this is a vector I am defining. So, first is this one and that is equal to 1. Now, I take u 2. So, u 2 I am writing. So, I know that u 2 will be equal to f 2 minus taking the inner product of f 2 with u 1 divided by inner product of u 1 with u 1 u 1. So, by the Gram Smith process we already know that this is the way we can define u 2. Now, from here first I need to define what is my f 2 u 1 inner product. So, I am taking from minus 1 to 1. So, f 2 is x and u 1 is 1. So, it will be only d x and from here I know that this is a odd function defined from minus 1 to 1. So, it is a just a line. So, the odd function this and this will be opposite sign. So, it is value will be 0. So, this dot product is 0. It means that both f 2 and u 1 are 
already orthogonal to each other and also if I want to see u1 taking the dot product with u1 inner product. So, this is I am defining from minus 1 to 1. So, u1 is 1, so it will be just dx and this is my x 1 and minus 1, so it will be 1 plus 1 that will be 2. Okay. So, from here, but uh, this thing is already 0, so it means from here I can write my u2 is f2, f2 is my x and this thing is already 0, so this is my u2 only. So, u1 into u1 is 2 and u2 is just x. So, let us see what is u2, u2 taking the inner product. So, inner product is minus 1 to 1. So, u2 is x, so it will be x into x, so it will be x square and now it will be x cube by 3 from minus 1 to 1, so it will be 3 and x cube is 1 plus 1, so it will be 2 by 3. So, I got the u2 with the u2 is 2 by 3 and from here I know that this is equal to u2 norm u1 norm square and that is 2 by 3. Now, I want to define what is my u3. So, u3 will be f3 minus taking the inner product of f3 with u1, u1, u1 plus into u1 because we are uh, it is not the orthonormal, so it is orthogonal one. So, it is into u1 plus inner product of f3 with u2 and this is u2, u2 and this is my u2. So, this is my inner product we have defined. Now, we are taking f3 with u1. So, I need to define first what is f3 with u1. So, it is from minus 1 to 1 and f3 is x square and u1 is 1. So, it is f3 is x square and u1 is 1, so it will be x square dx. So, it is a even function that we already know. So, I can write from here, so this is equal to basically 1 by 3 x cube minus 1 1 and I can write from here that this will be 2 by 3. I want to define what is f 3 u 2, f 3 u 2. So, this is from minus 1 to 1, f 3 is x square, f 3 is x square and u 2 is x. So, into x dx. So, u 2 is x. So, it is minus 1 to 1, it is x cube dx and its value will be 0 because it is odd, odd function. So, I can take, if I take the uh, integration, its value will be 0. Now, so from here, once we get this value, I get my u 3 as f 3 is x square minus. So, this one I can write 2 by 3 f 3 u 1. So, f 3 u 1 is 2 by 3. Now, divided by u 1. So, u 1 I know its magnitude is 2. So, it is 2 into u 1. So, u 1 is 1. So, I just write into 1 plus now f 3 u 2 is 0. So, it is be 0 and from here I get my x square minus 1 by 3. So, this is again. 
So from here I get orthogonal vectors or functions in this case are so this is 1 x and x square minus 1 by 3 and if you see from here then this will be look like the Legendre polynomial. Legendre's polynomials. Only condition is that they satisfy one condition that Legendre polynomial satisfy this condition. So from here we can write this as it is satisfying this one only the problem is coming here 1 minus 1 by 3. So it is 2 by 3. So if I want to write from Legendre polynomial I can write as a 1 x x and x square 1 by 3 by 2 by 3. So this become the Legendre polynomial. So this way we can define even I can define the same polynomials in the interval from 0 to 1 and then you can make them orthogonal. So everything depends upon that which type of inner product you are defining what is the range over the integration. So everything we can do with the help of Graham Smith process we can make them orthogonal. So this is the way we can define what are the functions even you can uh, take another set of function I can just define the set of functions like I take a set s as maybe I can take x sin x and exponential x three function I can take and then I can from there I can take this belongs to a vector space c from maybe I can take 0 to 1. Then these functions are linearly independent so I can make them orthogonal with defining the inner product. So in this case this is the inner product here I can define the inner product as f g that will be from 0 to 1 f x g x d x. So then the inner product will change the integration from 0 to 1 it will be and the same procedure you can follow. So this way we can define now after doing this uh, functions the next thing we want to discuss is that how we can say the orthogonality in in the space of in the vector space of matrices now before doing this one so these things we have defined in the real valued function or the real function means the functions are real the same way I can define about set of continuous function over the interval a b complex valued. function or complex functions means I can define the function f x as maybe maybe I can define it as 2 plus i x. So this is a one of the function I have defined. So in this case if you see the, do, the inner product I will define that will be from A to B then fx in gx conjugate dx. So this way we can define. So this will be the inner product we can define when we are dealing with the complex functions. Now we define the orthogonality in the case of vector spaces of matrices we that we have already seen. Now suppose we have a 
suppose we take a vector space v of m 2 cross 2. So, I am taking the 2 cross 2 matrix just for the example. Now, let us take I take a matrix A as 1 0 1 1 and the another matrix B I am taking that is 1 2 1 0. Suppose I am taking this matrix. So, this 2 matrix belongs to this set. Now, the matrix is A and B are linearly independent. So, that we uh, already know or maybe we can verify by just taking the linear combination 1 0 1 1 plus B 1 2 1 0 <coughs> because this A and B are the scalars real numbers. So, these are the scalars and that I put equal to 0 matrix because we are taking the linear combination and from here you can see that I can define my A plus B is equal to 0 then B is 2 B is equal to 0 A plus B is equal to 0 and A is equal to 0. So, this is all satisfied when we take A is equal to 0 and B is equal to 0. So, they are linearly independent. Now, we want to make A and B orthogonal. So, this one I want to do. I am just taken the two matrices and then the same procedure we can extend for three matrices, four matrices, n dimensional any n number of matrices. So, this one we can do. So, now we are going to use using Gram Smith process. So, what we are going to do? So, let this is the matrix. So, I call it maybe I can call it uh, V1. So, I just call this matrices as vector V1 and this I can call it V2. So, I know that the set V1 and V2 is Li. So, let us make them orthogonal. So, step 1. So, but before that I know that the inner product between the matrices A and B is trace of A transpose B that we already know. <coughs> so, I am using this uh, inner product. So, step 1 is that I take U 1 as V 1. So, I am making, making them orthogonal not the orthonormal. So, just does not matter whether they are normalized or not. So, I take u 1 as v 1. Now, step 2. I can take u 2 as v 2 minus inner product of v 2 with u 1 and u 1 u 1 inner product u 1. So, this one we need to define. Now, from here I want to find what is this v 2 taking the inner product with u 1. So, this one we need to define. So, that will be equal to trace of the matrix v 2 transpose u 1 that is equal to I am taking the trace. Now, V 2 transpose. So, V 2 is my B basically this is equal to trace of. So, V 2 is basically I am taking B transpose and U 1 is V 1 basically. So, it is basically I am finding this value. 
Now, from here this is equal to so B transpose is 1, 2, 1, 0 and A is 1, 0, 1, 1. And from here I can take my trace as so I am just multiplying here. So, it will be 2, 1, it is 1 into 2 and this is 0 and 0. So, it will be 0 and from here I get the value 2. So, this is my trace that is coming 2 in this case. Okay. So, after doing this one I want to take what is my u 1 with u 1. So, I want to define so, basically I am taking the square the norm of this one. So, this is trace of u 1 transpose u 1 and that we already know that this is equal to the square of the all the elements of u 1 u 1 is basically v 1. So, it is 1 plus 1 plus 1 that is 3. So, from this condition I can take my u 2 is v 2 is b. So, it is 1 2 1 0. So, I can write it is 1 2 1 0 minus I can write like this one. Now, this v 2 u 1 is 2. So, I can take the 2. Now, from here taking the this value is 3 and from here I take the u 1, u 1 is basically v 1. So, I am just taking a so 1 0 1 1. So, it is 1 0 1 1. So, that is my u 2 and that will be equal to 1 2 1 0 minus so, it is I can write just 1 0 1 1 and that gives me. So, 1 minus 2 by 3, so 1 by 3. Now, 2 minus 0 it would be 2 then 1 minus 2 by 3. So, again 1 by 3 and 0 minus 2 by 3. So, it is minus 2 by 3. So, this is my u 2. So, I have already seen that u 1 is my v 1 and then u 2 is my this one. And you can also verify from here that if I take u 1 u 2 dot product. So, if I take this one then the trace and this will be u 1 transpose. So, u 1 is basically v 1. So, it transpose 1 0 1 1. So, it will be 1 0 1 1 and u 2 is this one. So, it is 1 by 3 2 1 by 3 minus 2 by 3. And from here I can take this is equal to trace and taking this uh, product here. So, 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 it is 2 by 3. Now, I am taking the from here multiplying this. So, 2 minus 2 by 3. So, 6 minus 2 4 by 3. Then I am taking this with this. Uh, so, it will be 1 by 3 and 1. So, it will 1 by 3 and then taking from here. So, it is 2 minus 2 by 3 and taking the trace. So, value is coming 0. So, they are becoming orthogonal to each other. So, now from here I can say that the set u 1 and u 2 is orthogonal and, and if I take this set 
u1 divided by its magnitude u2 divided by its means I am dividing by its uh, norm. So, that becomes the orthonorm. So, using the concept of inner product and the Gram Smith process, we can take any vector, it may be a function or it may be a matrix. Using the inner product, we can define them and then we can use the Gram Smith process to orthogonalize them. So, the same way we are doing here. So, after doing this one, I want to define a very important property from taken from the dot product. So, th this is Cauchy. Cauchy Schwarz inequality. So, this is we are defining in the R n. So, in the R n we know that we know that in R n. So, this is my vector space V. If I take the Euclidean. So, because in this case the we are defining the Euclidean inner product that is similar as a dot product. So, u dot v is basically we are defining. Now, in this case we already know that u dot v is basically equal to modulus of u v cos theta that we have already know about the dot product of vectors in R n and I can maybe write this as a norm does not matter because ultimately it is a length of the vector u and v. So, from here we know that I can take my cos theta as u dot v and dividing by their product. Now, since cos theta is always lying from minus 1 to 1. So, which implies that I can write that u dot v the dot product this can be written as lying from minus 1 to 1. And from here I can say that u dot v the dot product of the two vectors has the bounds. So, this is equal to minus product of their length and this is the positive sign product of their length. So, basically it gives you the bounds on the dot product. It means if somebody asks that if we take the dot product of two vector then how big and how small that can be. So, it is always if you take the dot product that is always less than equal to the product of their length and always greater than equal to minus of the product of that length. So, this property is called the cauchy schwarz inequality. So, this is cauchy schwarz inequality. So, for example, let us take one vector. So, I just take in R 3, I take a vector u as 1, 2, minus 1, I take another vector v as minus 1, 0, 3 basically suppose I take this one. And if I take the dot product u and v, so this is minus 1, 0 and minus 3 just taking the dot product. So, it is minus 4 and now if I take norm of u. So, norm of u is 1 plus 4 plus 1 under the root. So, that is root 6 and this is 1 plus 9 
root. So, so from here we can say that that u dot v. Now, if I take the dot product of this one, so it will be six into ten sixty, and this will be minus sixty. And you know that sixty is basically less than eight and greater than seven, so it is approximately seven point something, and u and v is minus seven point something. So u and v is coming minus four. So it is satisfying that this is, in this case, it is less than minus four, uh, greater than minus seven and less than seven. So this is satisfying. So from here we know that this inequality is satisfying. So this one we can find from any vectors with the help of this Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. So this is very important inequality in the case of uh, inner product space. So, based on this one, I can now I can define the same Cauchy Schwarz inequality. Inequality. So, now I define any inner product space. So, V is any inner product space <coughs> then for any u and v belongs to the vector space v i can define u v in a product so this is my inner product u and v can be matrix also it can be a function also it can be a polynomial anything so then this is always I can write as minus of norm of u into norm of v, norm of u and norm of v. So this is the same way we can define. So this is the cauchy schwarz inequality in the vector space that is inner product space having any inner product. So this is also satisfied or applicable in any of the inner product. So this is where we can define the cauchy schwarz inequality. Now we will stop here. So in the uh, today's lecture we have discussed that how we can define two functions or maybe two matrices orthogonal and with the help of the Graham Smith process we have shown that if we have a set of linearly independent vectors in terms of uh, functions or matrices then we can make them orthogonal using the Graham Smith process. So and also we have defined the another important property of the inner product space that is a cauchy schwarz inequality. So in the next lecture we will discuss about the norms and other things of a given vector in a vector space. So thanks for watching, thanks very much.